March has been a crazy month. So I wanted to share with you guys everything that I've been up to. I've been all over the country doing some things that have been on my bucket list for a long time. Okay, where to start? Beginning of the month, I ran my first ultra marathon in Arkansas. Right now, I'm working a contract in Florida at a hospital. I'm a traveling clinical registered dietitian. I had to stack my work week. I worked five tens in a row and then I flew to Arkansas to run my ultra marathon that I had signed up for months and months and months ago. The race was about two hours from where I live in Arkansas, so I had to drive up there. So let's head that way and see how this goes. Day before race day, this is where I'm staying tonight, the Norfolk River Resort. And this is actually where the race begins tomorrow. So it'd be really nice to wake up out of my room and walk straight to the start line. Here's my room. Thought about staying in my van, but I really wanted like a bathroom and stuff. <sighs> my first ultra marathon. Am I ready? I don't know. I hope so. I started running long distance for the first time ever in my life in October of 2023. And it is March 1st, my race is tomorrow, so March 2nd. The race is called the Ozark Highlands Endurance Race. It is in Norfolk, Arkansas, and it runs along the Ozark Highlands Trail. It'll be about 31 miles, and there's an elevation profile of just under 5,000 feet. Most of the training that I've done has been in Florida, so I haven't had much elevation training at all. My goal with this first race is to just finish. Another thing I just thought about is I've only ever ran 13 miles. That's the longest I've ever ran, and I've only done that three times. So once I get past mile 13, I have no idea what to expect for the next 70. I decided to do the packet pickup tonight, so I'm headed there now. Okay, packet pickup is done. This is my dinner. I'm gonna carb up and get to bed because the race starts at 7 a.m. tomorrow. Okay, I said I was going to get to bed, but I'm going to drive down this road because this is part of the course. So beautiful. I'm going to be running that tomorrow, that mountain. I'd like to take a minute and thank BetterHelp for sponsoring today's video. In the past, when I had a lot of things planned back to back, I would get really stressed, have anxiety, and this would eventually lead to burnout. But I've learned that having somebody to talk to really helps to keep my mental health in check. BetterHelp is awesome because it's an online-based counseling service. And for someone who travels a lot like me, this is a great option to talk to a therapist anywhere I go. Getting started is really easy. I did a short survey and they provided options for me to be matched with a therapist that best aligns with my personal needs. BetterHelp also makes it really easy to rematch with different therapists if the first one isn't a good fit. The online platform allows me to schedule appointments when it works for me in my busy schedule or just be able to check in whenever I need some support. It's more affordable than traditional in-person counseling and financial aid is available. If this sounds like something that you would be interested, you can visit betterhelp.com and use my code Kelly Hayes for 10% off your first month. Good morning. It's uh, race day, it's freezing cold, it's really foggy. Um, we're about to get started here, it's 6.45. We're gonna have like the meeting and then get going, so. Uh, I gotta get warmed up. It's cold, I'm nervous. <laughs> All right, we did like a 
2.6 on the road. And now we're getting on the trail. Here we go. The terrain is uh, pretty rocky. And I'm not used to running on rocks. Because I've been doing all my running in Florida. So I'm going to have to slow down. So this might be cool. This is awesome. There would be a view, but it's really foggy. The sun's pretty though. Alright, I just made it to the first aid station. Which I think it was at mile. 4.5 or something like that. I feel really good. I probably need to slow down. But uh, start to warm up. I drank a little cup of their electrolytes and downed a piece of banana. So I'm trying to get as much nutrition as I can in because that's what I'm not good at. I can go this whole race without eating. And it's too long of a run for that. So food at every aid station, food every like 30 minutes. Okay, let's get it. Now I'm out in. Whew. Oh, I keep forgetting to video at the aid stations. <laughs> there was a DJ at that one. <laughs> I ate half an orange, um, some scratch, something else. I don't know. We have five miles to the next aid station, and that's the turnaround point. And then we turn around and we run it back. I'm feeling good. Still trying to tell myself to slow down. My adrenaline's still on 10. I'm like hot and cold. Like I've been hot and cold this whole race. It's just like, I don't know, it's weird. But we're doing it. This is so much fun, woo! I went ahead and took my alpaca jacket off because I was like, cold and then hot and I realized that I just sweat that thing out and it was making me cold. So I took it off and I think I feel better. I've been walking up this hill because it's kicking my butt. And uh, so yeah, slowing down a little bit, getting a little tired, but um, still going strong so far. And a beautiful view, the fog finally cleared out. Whew, this is awesome. Hey y'all, it's Kelly from the future. So this is around the point in the race when I hit that 13 mile marker where I was nervous about 13 miles, that's the long side of Iran. Well, right around that time is when we started climbing this massive mountain and that's when it started to get hard and I was like, crap. I have to turn around and do this all over again. <laughs> but I got to that 15 mile aid station and my dad surprised me up there. Now I told him that I was doing this race and he wasn't sure if he was gonna be able to make it, but he surprised me up there at the aid station and I can't even explain to y'all how big of a morale boost that was to see him there. I was able to get some good nutrition in. I came into that aid station feeling defeated and tired, wondering how I was gonna get through, and I left that aid station, like bombed out, ran down the mountain, felt really good and really strong. I think I passed one or two people at that point in the race. This is also the point where I kind of stopped recording because my mind was way focused on how am I going to finish this thing? And I also learned that I was in third place for women's. And so that's when my competitive spirit came out and I was like, I'm not losing my third place. I knew where the girl was behind me and I wanted to get a really good big lead on her. You're still going. Yeah. Four more to go. Uh, four, more. four more miles, right? Uh, no, like two and a half. All right. 
Love you, ciao. Yo, I was nice out so I can have the race. But I'm, I think, like a mile away from the end. Oh, I'm so tired. I'm on the road. The river is incredibly beautiful. Home stretch, baby. Woo! And here I am finishing my very first ultra marathon, 31 miles, 4,798 feet of elevation gain. It was amazing. I ended up finishing in seven hours and 29 minutes, which I was really proud of myself for. This is definitely gonna become a thing for me. I think what really helped me, even though I didn't do any elevation training, was just drawing back from my hiking experience. I was laughing to myself on a couple of the mountains when I was like, oh, why is this so steep and it's never ending? And then I was like, girl, you could be in the whites with 30 pounds on your back, why are you complaining? And then that kind of just put me back in my place and I was like, okay, this, this could be worse. Yeah, I just want to thank my dad for coming out and supporting me. I met a bunch of really cool people. The ultra running community is awesome. It reminds me a lot of the through hiking community. I think what I really loved the most about this ultra was trying something new and being new at something. I'm excited for my future of ultra running. Right, so after my ultra marathon, I flew back to Florida. I worked six tens in a row, 60 hours. And then I packed my bags, went to the airport, and flew to Phoenix for my friend's bachelorette party in Sedona. The first thing on our agenda was an ATV ride through Broken Arrow. Unreal. So unreal. Oh, he's, he's falling off. He's falling off, brother. <laughs>
make it look so easy. The mountain lady is like okay. Like she's just up there. <laughs> up there. Our next stop. Chicken point. Yes, ma'am. This is so cool. Look at all the water like running off that. All right, we are going to do a hike up to there. That is where we just were at Submarine Rock. Kind of looks like a submarine. So why is this called Chicken Rock? Is this, does it look like a chicken? That's super pretty. I can't tell. What do y'all think? Does it look like a chicken? This is Mushroom Rock. Oh, oh my gosh, you can't just drive all around it. A little scary. <laughs> that big old cliff. finished our little ATV rides and so much fun. I love that. I want a 4x4 vehicle ATV now. Just found out that Purdue lost to Wisconsin in overtime. Missed that game. So sad. But Illinois about to play Nebraska in the Big Ten tournament. So I'm going to get some food, watch that game, and we got like dinner or something planned. Ready to go out tonight. We're gonna do Stephanie's lingerie party. And the sun came out. Oh. Oh my gosh. The weather's been bipolar all day. It was hailing earlier, like little hail pellets. But now, this is incredible. I've never been anywhere or stayed anywhere like this. This is insane. Look at this. Yeah, we're gonna go out to like a really nice dinner tonight. Fun. Illinois won, beat Nebraska. We're going to the semifinal. Load her up. The roof leaks. Oh, <laughs> this is chaos. It is so much. Thank you. Can y'all go to the back of the van and open her up? Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. We are going on a hike. There's a little two miler right down the road from our Airbnb. We can just walk to it. It's called Soldier Pass, like sunrise hike or something. But it is a beautiful morning and it looks like it's going to turn out to be a really pretty day here. This is the view walking down the driveway from our Airbnb. Like that is just insane. Look at the cactus. There's also this dome that I keep seeing right there. And I want to know more about this dome. 
That's pretty cool. This really makes me want to do the Arizona Trail. Like I've been knowing that I've been wanting to do that for a while now, but now being in Arizona, it's bumped up. I think 2025. This is like we're doing. <laughs> so there are over 400 trails in Sedona. You just look at the map and they're, they're everywhere. So we got out here and we just started kind of walking one direction. And then I looked at all trails map and I found that we're right next to seven sacred pools, which is a really cool hike. There's like seven pools of water. I'm really excited. I didn't realize we were that close. Whoa. What are doing? That's insane. I thought where's a hole in there? Yeah. Look at this. This all this rock just fell in. That is insane. There's like a cave down there. This is a sinkhole. Apparently water got underneath this and it just collapsed one day. Is that someone's drone down there? That is somebody's no. drone. Oh man, that's a they DJI try. too. <laughs> so cool. We are here. Seven sacred pools. Look at them. Thank you. It's just ever so slightly pouring into the bigger pools. No, <laughs> After our hike, Stephanie rented us a party bus. And this was really cool because not only did it take us to some amazing bars and restaurants, but also the sightseeing out of the bus was incredible. I got to watch Illinois win the Big Ten Championship here. Definitely the highlight of my day. And then the, this brewery was just insane. Everywhere we went, the view was 10 out of 10. Thank you guys so much for coming with me on parts of my crazy month of March. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I will see you very soon. Thank you for watching. Love you guys. Bye.